let's hope this is the first of many many beautiful days I always think it's uh, I have a lovely aerial shot of this um, pitch it's a great spot like right mm -hmm. by the sea and all yeah. the beauty but uh, happy days um, uh, there's, there's a, uh, an under 17 national league that um, uh, we were delighted that we got the license for County Wicklow for the under 17 uh, girls women's league of Ireland right. uh, we were granted it in January we were asked to put in a letter of interest last year and we put it in and in November we were granted the license and it went public in January. Right. So we um, the league will run this summer as an intern basis and a short season from July to November and we have our first open training sessions starting on Monday the thirtieth. Right. And you're putting the call out but uh, any girls born in two thousand and two thousand and one in particular yes. you're you're kinda of putting the shout yeah. out to see if they're uh, for uh, to anybody of yeah. interest, yeah. That would be the age groups we are targeting. If right. there is a, a, um, a very good player at another at a younger age group, we wouldn't turn them away. Right. But it would be targeted at 2001, 2002. Right. Okay. Now, is that your phone or is that just That's a... My phone. Oh, I, th my I, th apologies. I thought it was a really cool uh, ice cream van passing us. <laughs> I, should re I should really turn it on the side, shouldn't I? That's all right. But I, I, I would think now, 2011 was the first time that, that it introduced like having you know women's teams here. It's grown to, I think it's six teams now between all We have six teams now. We have now developed with this... With this uh, um, with this, sorry, Paul. That's all right. With this, uh, is the pizza ready or? <laughs> <laughs> Long time away before I get me dinner tonight. With with the granting of the national license, we now have a full pathway from uh, for girls football into League of Ireland. So right. when a girl comes along at the age of six and seven into our academies on a Saturday morning. We now have uh, football for girls right up through to League of Ireland now at under 17s. So there's the full pathway there. Was there ever? I don't know if there was a kind of a, a any kind of teething problems in regard to the fact that you know it's fantastic in rugby and in football and every sport there's incredible women's teams and especially in Greystones now there's been great success in, 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 in rugby also I mean, th th was it odd at first was it was it difficult to convince people that it's, it's something to do or for years we had we were boys participated with girls and girls participated with boys and and there was a cut-off age at under 13s where girls had to go off and play in their own teams and, and in all girls but that's that's changed the FAA have changed that all right and they can now participate with boys right up to when they're 16 they can play fit under 15s but it's the fastest growing team sport uh, in Ireland and in most of Europe at the moment girls football and um, so the FAI have put uh, money into uh, structure in the League of Ireland at women's level and now they're going in at underage level at under 17s in Greystones we've always had girls playing soccer right. and, a, and, a, and a major interest in soccer um, but in the past there hasn't been that pathway and there hasn't been anywhere up to when they get to a certain age and we lost them through soccer not only in Greystones but nearly all in Ireland we lost them to other sports okay. and they got to a certain age now we, we hope we fill that gap I'm, I'm trying to think of the way, of certain turning points a movie like Bended Like Beckham would have had a great cultural impact in, in the notion of, of especially in America there was suddenly this not only recognition of football kind of was brought in with that but then the fact that it was you know Kieran Knightley and, and I forget the other yeah. girl's name but that sense that this is for everybody this is you know there's a lot of great um as long as i can remember that uh, we had um Anya garman one of our best internationals uh, oh, right. a very young girl she um played with uh, doncaster bells in england okay and she was one of the first girls i think memory serves me correct to get a contract in england playing women's football right but now we have um only last weekend louise quinn uh scored a, a goal in the, in the semi-final for arsenal against everton nice. to put them in the women's fa cup final she right. had the winner so yeah. and the success that our national team are having now under Colin Bell, where we're, we're really doing very well in the World Cup qualifiers. So there's always been um, uh, great footballers out there. Right. Um, even uh, Katie Taylor played for Ireland um, before she chose boxing. I th just think it was under the radar. Right. It was always there, but it was under the radar, and now it's come out. And of course, 2014, Stephanie Roach made a quite a, quite the impact. Quite that the, the runner up, impact, and, but yeah. that would have been a. a pure a clear sign of just how, how um you know how great the sport is yes. but also that somebody like that you realize oh, okay she can do that and yes. it's, it's that good that's that recognized that, by yeah. fifa and, and as i said yeah. i think the talent has always been there and it took something like stephanie's goal that luckily enough somebody was in the in the crowd to video it right and um, because i'm sure there's girls that have played in the mgl in the metropolitan girls league who were scoring those goals right week in week out we just never get to see it on social that's media it. catching the lightning every now exactly. and again yeah exactly and then once it went global then it did it did um progress the, the, the for everybody to see and of course a, a clear sign of, of the popularity is the metropolitan you know league in, in dublin they've got like five thousand members i think it's 200 clubs are kind of connected to it or something yes crazy the number. metropolitan girls league yeah. yeah it's growing and and um it's it's not just growing it's it's getting um it's it's so well organized now and it, and it's and it's really doing well they have uh, the gainer cup which is a, a national cup for the, all the leagues and all in all of ireland the women's leagues um compete in limerick in limerick university during the summer and the mg 
AGL are doing very done very well in that over the years. Um, and the Midlands League is a very good setup for girls football, and I'm sure I'm leaving at Cork as well. I've always yeah. had a good setup for for girls football. It's just it's the whole big thing was getting it out for everybody to see and make it public. Um, you, we could go on and quoting girls, and, and but it's always been there. It's just we've had to, we haven't seen it. I suppose to wrap up would be just an idea of the timetable. Then are we looking at this year? Will it be next year? Before I don't know how long it takes for for this to come to fruition. That the you know it the will be this year. We right. have our first open training session as I say on the thirtieth, Monday the thirtieth. Okay. Um, and then the league will start in in uh, in mid July. They're hoping. Okay, to start that's in great. Mid July. Yeah. So we'll have it we, once we get the, the the team together and everything together. Um, we will be starting a pre-season training um, when the um, all the players get in and signed. And then the league will start. Um, there will be 11 teams in the league uh, for the mid team, uh, the short season. Um, and we are being told it will be regionalised. Um, right. There will be a north and a southern section, and Greystones will, will be in the southern section. Um, so there will be a bit of travelling to do, um, yeah. and we will be looking for sponsors to help us out because it will cost a few bob. Right. Um, but um, we would be uh, confident of making a, a big impact. And then in January of 2019, that's when we have the full season, and the FEI hope to have a 12 team league and right. that will go from January to November in the full season very much so the, the likes of the Men's League of Ireland well, we'll put the contact details in here for those who, who might like to get involved and, and help as you say the sponsorship is important mm -hmm. but also we will obviously keep keep uh, keep in touch and, and find out as, as it progresses just let people know exactly where and when and who and, and just yes. uh, wish them yeah. all the best because I think people will be very excited at the uh, it's always a sort of great thrill when, when, when anybody from the town is involved in a mm -hmm. well know, it, it now means that, that girls from this area don't have to travel um, into Dublin to play National League of Ireland um, right. we do know even by putting the feelers out there in the first uh, instance that there are girls uh, in the surrounding areas, uh, both north and south of Greystones, that travel into Dublin to play at a high level. They right. don't have to do that now. We have them here in this catchment area that we have here. And of course, all around here, we're all basically better than everywhere else, so it would be good to have them all in the one place, just yes. playing together. So yes, that, that yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, yeah. <laughs> Instead of spreading them out to be successful, yeah, we, don't we want can have it here. The power. We can't, gotta, like, you, 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 you've got to go full Avengers on this. You've got to pull them all together. We'll the pull them all team. together and we'll, and, and we'll let them know what we're all about. Rock and roll.